last few years, there's been a lot of discussion in the requirements engineering research community about researchers' responsibility to deliver practical, usable solutions to industry. Practitioners complain that researchers often work on theoretical problems that never seem to see the light of day, while their day-to-day -day problems remain unsolved. Nevertheless, many researchers collaborate closely with industrial partners and do care deeply about technology transfer. Unfortunately, we face many hurdles in moving a viable research idea from inception to deployment. To encourage and foster technology transfer in the RE community, Dana Damian and I initiated a panel called Ready, Set, Transfer, which was a game show style event at the IEEE International Requirements Engineering Conference. We started this in 2011 and have been offering it every year since. We designed the panel to encourage an honest exchange of ideas between researchers and practitioners. The idea was that instead of just talking about technology transfer, researchers would present their ideas to a team of industrial judges, explaining the industrial motivation and describing how they've evaluated their ideas adoption readiness. We've been running Ready, Set, Transfer every year since 2011. During that time, several interesting projects have emerged, which represent ideas as varied as crowdsourcing, adaptive privacy, and traceability of safety critical systems. This year, Jane Huffman Hayes and Deed Arzogi hosted the panel. The three, the three research projects they selected represented solutions from the diverse areas of requirement elicitation, modeling, and traceability. You can decide for yourself whether these solutions are successful in terms of technology transfer. Each one is at a different level of adoption readiness and carries a different degree of risk. I hope that discussing them will help us start to think seriously about some of the issues, challenges and responsibilities of technology transfer in the requirements engineering area. This year, our panelists included Mike Panis from Teradyne, Juha Savolainen from Danfoss Power Electronics in Denmark, and Eric Bjemnjof from Tolpagorni Product Management AB in Sweden. As you'll see, they made insightful comments to the contestants. So what I'm going to do in this discussion today is to describe each of the three projects to you and then discuss them a little bit further. So the first project is called FlexiSketch. This is a unique collaborative sketching tool that comes out of the University of Zurich. FlexiSketch runs across multiple tablets and mimics a distributed whiteboard. It supports freeform drawings and arbitrary node and edge diagrams. In addition, it aims to fill the gap between formal modeling and freeform drawing tools. Users can incrementally transform informal whiteboard sketches into formal models by retroactively creating new types using a lightweight meta modeling feature. So, for example, a user could select a shape on the whiteboard, promote it to a formal reusable type in the meta model. FlexiSketch supports a seamless transition from sketching to modeling. Whiteboard sketches become more than pretty pictures and users can evolve them into semi-formal models that they can open in modeling tool environments. The FlexiSketch team particularly made a great effort to overcome the technology transfer hurdle, including uploading their early version to Google Play and encouraging requirements engineers from various companies to assist them in the early prototyping. They've also presented FlexiSketch at conferences attended by potential industrial adopters. Finally, they conducted three in-depth workshops at select companies to evaluate their approach and investigate people's sketching and notation defining behavior when using FlexiSketch. Dustin Wurst, who is one of the researchers from the University of Zurich, said that this experience taught them that platforms and technologies matter Several companies were willing to try to FlexiSketch only if an iOS version was available. Dustin also pointed out that research and industry needs often diverge, whereas researchers tend to focus on proposing and evaluating novel ideas and concepts. Industrial adopters want rich, stable feature sets, which can honestly be very costly for us as academics to deliver. In addition, Dustin mentioned that taking a research idea to market requires a team effort that involves not just scientific discovery, 
but also outreach and marketing skills. At the panel, the industrial panel asked how the team could be certain that early adopters were using the novel features of the semi-formal meta-modeling and not just adopting FlexiSketch for its basic collaborative whiteboard features. The team answered that they already had been addressing this through the face-to-face -face industrial workshops that they had conducted, and this gave them deep insights into the features people were using. Indeed, they can say as a result of these workshops that FlexiSketch is much more than a collaborative whiteboard sketching tool. The second project that was presented was by Martin Moho from Namur University. Martin has developed a slew of creativity solutions for requirements discovery. One of the solutions he created is called the Collaborative Creativity Canvas. If you want to see what this looks like, you can go to the IEEE software website and download the column and there's several diagrams there. But facilitators of requirement solicitation meetings use the Collaborative Creativity Canvas to foster creativity and replace the often frustrating requirements negotiation process with a lively co-creation process. The idea is to turn stakeholder conflicts into opportunities for innovation. Although Martin's research included traditional literature reviews, expert opinions and practitioner surveys, it was driven largely by industrial collaboration. Ideas that were initially conceived in industry were then iteratively and incrementally improved as they moved back and forth between the lab and practice. As such, Martin's creativity solutions resulted from industrial partnerships and not through the more traditional model in which an idea emerges from research and then incubates in a lab for five years before the finished product is offered to industry. Martin explained that this project revealed the benefits of industrial co-design, especially through the ongoing guidance and feedback he was able to obtain. He pointed out that working with industry did not produce short-sighted research because he had the time and freedom to consider and explore innovative ideas throughout the process. The final product is called Archie. Architectural knowledge and related quality concerns are often undocumented and tacit in projects, and therefore developers often lose track of early design decisions. So for example, system level qualities representing what we might call non-functional requirements, representing things such as security, availability, reliability, etc., tend to become eroded during refactoring, bug fixing, and other maintenance activities. So to address this problem, researchers at DePaul University developed Archie, which is an Eclipse plugin. Archie focuses on requirements role in a project's downstream design and maintenance phases. It passes source code, and then automatically detects and visualizes a range of architectural tactics such as heartbeat, resource pooling, and role-based access control. Archie's been funded by grants from the US National Science Foundation and the Department of Homeland Security in the USA and developed by students at DePaul University. To place Archie into practitioner's hand, it was released on GitHub under Archie Smart IDE and also on the Department of Homeland Security Swamp, the Software Assurance Marketplace web, web page. Mehdi Miracoli explained that one of the greatest challenges for technology transfer was in understanding the real user's actual usage patterns. He said that this was addressed through frequent iterations of prototyping, coding, and testing. However, the real test ultimately will come as industrial users adopt Archie in their development environments. So in some ways, Archie is less advanced along the technology transfer scale than FlexiSketch or Martin's creative collaboration activities. The panelists questioned whether developers on real projects would find the prepackaged set of trained classifiers fit for their purpose. The Archie presenters explained that Archie was highly flexible and that teams could construct new tactic templates and either train new classifiers or use Archie's click and point features to map code sections manually to the new tactics. So what's next? The Ready Set Transfer panel always raises interesting technology transfer issues, some of which we have answers for and some of which we don't. Mike Panis, one of the panelists, saw benefits to both sides and explained that the panel helps researchers, regardless of whether they are contestants or in the audience, to step back from the potential 
future value of their research and consider what would be needed for it to provide immediate benefits. He also observed that it helps practitioners consider whether they can apply research results to their current work. So challenges and opportunities abound. In my own research, I found that the biggest adoption barriers are the cost and effort of bringing viable research prototypes to industrial standards. A typical research grant doesn't normally include funding for this kind of technology transfer, so researchers must proactively seek additional funding to jump the readiness hurdle. One thing is clear. Successful technology transfer needs both sides of the partnership, both practitioners and academics. We can't succeed unless researchers and practitioners work together to address important problems that a typical software development project cannot accommodate. Neither can academics be confident that they're addressing the right problems at the appropriate scale and complexity without industry's feedback and its willingness to share data and to expose its challenges. So whichever side of this coin you sit on, I hope that you'll think about the technology transfer issues from the other side and look for opportunities to engage in these kind of endeavors. So as always, I'd love to hear from you. In a future column, I'd like to give more voice to practitioners. So I invite you to email me and tell me about problems you're experiencing that you wish researchers would address or about your success or failure stories regarding technology transfer. Let's engage in an ongoing fruitful discussion so that we can see innovative requirements projects possibly seeded from industry make their way to industry as viable and effective solutions. Mm -hmm.